Hello and welcome to this briefing for the low stakes online quizzes that you'll be attempting this semester as part of Psych 3020. So as part of this course, you'll be attempting 10 of these low stakes online quizzes in your own time. So you can access all of these quizzes via the assessment link in the Psych 3020 Blackboard site. You can attempt the quizzes anywhere via any computer with a reliable internet connection in the period leading up until the given deadline for each quiz. So these quizzes will not be invigilated and are open book. So the deadlines for the 10 quizzes are given in the course overview document, uh, which you can find uh, under learning resources under week one. Uh, you can also find them in the electronic course profile. So I click on course profile from the Blackboard site. Uh, I'll send out uh, an announcement which should be turned into an email for all of you. Uh, and this will indicate when each uh, quiz becomes available, uh, which uh, I anticipate will probably be about a week uh, before the quiz deadline, uh, although this might vary a bit from quiz to quiz. Uh, the announcement will also include a reminder of the deadline for the quiz and the lectures to be covered by each quiz. Once you start a quiz, you have to complete it within a given set time, which will vary from quiz to quiz. If you lose your internet connection, then you can log back on to continue the quiz, uh, but the timer will continue to count down while you are offline. When the time limit expires, your attempt at the quiz, wherever you've got to at that point, will automatically be submitted whether or not you've finished it. So what will happen is that your average score from the best seven out of the 10 quizzes will contribute 10% towards the final Psych 3020 course mark. This means you have three quizzes out of the 10 that will not count towards your final course mark and you can Use these three quizzes to allow for, first of all, getting a low score on up to three of those quizzes. Uh, secondly, if you happen to have technical problems that mean you cannot submit any particular quiz, so that is your internet connection dies for over a long period. Okay, so that happens, that can happen up to three times and hopefully won't affect your score. If you do have personal issues that mean you can't attempt a particular quiz, so you get ill or something like that, uh, then you've got three of those that you can miss before uh, it starts affecting your mark. If you've got any further questions or need help with these quizzes, uh, so something not covered by the briefing, please do contact your tutor rather than me. So, what's the point of these quizzes? So, these uh, quizzes are intended primarily as an evidence-based formative activity designed to increase your mark in the Psych 3020 final examination and maximize long-term retention and understanding of the material. That is, you should treat these quizzes as part of your revision strategy for learning the contents of the course. The main aim is to help you to study smarter and not just harder by applying state-of-the-art learning research. As part of this, the quizzes are also designed to make sure students attend lectures or at least view the materials uh, online within a couple of days of the lecture. Not only will you need to understand the information in the lectures in order to do the course assignments, research indicates that failing to space out uh, the content adequately across the semester makes it much harder to remember it. There is research evidence indicating that the use of regular low stakes quizzes during courses has a number of effects. First effect is uh, it dramatically increases marks in the final uh, examination for a course, so pretty much more than any other intervention. Uh, secondly, uh, these sorts of quizzes result in much longer memory retention of the material in the course. Thirdly, they tend to reduce stress in the final examination. And fourthly, research has found that these quizzes improve course ratings by students. So that is, students report that they like having these sorts of quizzes in a course. Okay, the reasons behind these sort of, sort of benefits are thought to include the following. So first up, the quizzes are thought to facilitate active retrieval of the course content. 
So that is through answering questions on that content. And this has been found to be much more efficient and effective for long-term retention than simply rereading or even re-watching the lecture content. Secondly, spacing your learning of this course material over a longer time period uh, results in much better long-term retention. So these uh, 10 quizzes, which are spaced out over the whole semester, should result in you being less stressed at the end of semester and having a substantially higher mark in that uh, final exam than you would have had otherwise. If you want a readable account of the psychological learning research behind all of this sort of thing, as well as further tips for how to study more efficiently and effectively in all your courses, as well as beyond university, I recommend reading uh, this book, which is available online from the library, from uh, the link uh, that I provided in the briefing. Uh, so you can get that for free. One of the main messages of the research literature that's talked about in this book is that people's intuition as to the best method of studying is generally wrong. So, for example, students tend to favour rereading material as a key revision strategy, but this is actually a very inefficient way of memorising things. Much more efficient is to reconstruct the material in your own words, i.e. writing notes, uh, and or answering questions on the material, so hence the quizzes. One key take-home message is that if your study practices feel easy, so that is just re-watching the lectures on Echo 360 or just re-reading -re -re the slides, maybe underlining and highlighting things, then you're probably engaging in very inefficient learning. But the thing is that this learning may falsely feel effective because you attain a sense of familiarity with the material, even though in reality you're not actually remembering it that well. The most efficient learning in terms of how much you'll remember and understand per hour of study is generally the most effortful, i.e. answering quiz questions or reconstructing the material in your own words. That is, it's all about studying smarter, but not just harder, given that there are only so many hours in a day. Let's go through some uh, frequently asked questions about these uh, quizzes. So, what if you miss a deadline for a quiz for a genuine reason? So, for these quizzes, there will be no extensions or exceptions available. Uh, so, if you don't submit your answers before the deadline, then you'll get a mark of zero for that quiz. Okay, so please give yourself plenty of time to allow for computer problems, internet crashes, and yourself getting ill. Uh, however, because only the scores from seven out of the ten quizzes will count towards your final course mark, you can afford to uh, miss three quizzes before it starts to affect your final overall mark. Uh, for every quiz you miss beyond those three quizzes, uh, it's worth noting that each quiz is still only worth about 1.4% of your final course mark, so that is it's unlikely to change your final grade. So don't stress too much if you do miss the odd quiz Beyond, those first three, beyond the first three quizzes that you can miss for free. Uh, so, uh, and also don't stress if you do get marks lower than what you wanted. Okay, so that's what it means in the title by saying it's low stakes. Okay, so we do strongly suggest that you attempt all of the quizzes that you possibly can in order to cover yourself for problems that might occur in future quizzes later on in the semester that you may be forced to miss because you get ill or you're internet crashes. Okay, if you do find yourself in a situation where you've missed more than three weeks of quizzes for genuine reasons, so that is you've got some sort of chronic illness uh, or something similar, please contact uh, Jenny English, our 3020 course administrator, uh, to discuss your situation. So what will each of the quizzes cover? So each quiz will cover one or more of the lectures, so usually the lecture from the week before. Uh, so have a look in the course uh, overview, uh, which you can find under Learning Resources Week 1 in the Blackboard site, to see which lectures are covered by which quiz. Okay, it also says this in the uh, electronic course profile. How long is each quiz? So quizzes may vary in length and content, as well as the amount of time you've got to do them, but I'll flag all of that in the email of the announcement I'll send around uh, flagging up uh, each quiz as it comes. What do you need to do before you attempt the quizzes? So, first of all, make sure that you've attended the lectures 
to be covered by each quiz before you attempt it. So there will be time to look up specific things in your notes if you know uh, where to look. So that is, it's not the case that you're going to have to memorize the whole lecture every single week. However, what you won't have is time to watch the entire lecture during each quiz. OK, so part of the point of the activity is to try and uh, persuade students to keep up with the lectures throughout semester. Make sure that you attempt the non-graded practice quiz uh, in week one to check that your setup is working correctly before you attempt any of the 10 real quizzes. What should you do if your internet connection goes down during the quiz? So I strongly recommend that you only attempt these quizzes somewhere where there is a reliable internet connection, so ideally on campus. However, if you do lose connection during a quiz, uh, just log straight back in as soon as you can, and you should be able to restart the quiz uh, as long as the timer hasn't run out on that quiz. So remember that the timer continues counting down even when you go offline. What do you need to do if you get any of the quiz questions uh, wrong? Well, uh, at a given, given time after the quiz deadline has passed, so usually a day or so later, you'll be alerted by email as to when that will be. You'll get access to your score on the quiz together with feedback on what the correct answers were and why they were correct. So um, please make sure you study this feedback as carefully as possible as part of the point of this exercise is to help you uh, to correct any misunderstandings you might have about any of the material. Is it possible for you to re-attempt the quizzes after you've submitted them? Uh, short answer, no, because they are an assessment that counts towards your final grade. So hopefully that's all made sense and uh, good luck in the quizzes.